I am Adil Kumar sharing with you a polynomial equation. We'll find the roots of the equation in the domain of complex numbers. The question here is find roots of equation x to the power of 4 minus 12x square minus 64 equals to 0 when x belongs to complex numbers. So let's rewrite the question. It is x to the power of 4 minus 12 x square minus 64 equals to 0. Now let's do a substitution. We'll substitute x square as let's say p. So that means x to the power of 4 is going to be p square. So we can replace this with p square minus 12 p minus 64 equals to 0. Now we can factor this. We are looking for product of two numbers to be minus 64 and the sum to be minus 12. 16 and 4 can work, right? So uh, since this is negative, the bigger number is negative. So we get p minus 16 times p plus 4. So that gives you two solutions. One is p equals to 16. The other one is p equals to minus 4. p is x squared. So we can always write this as x squared equals to 16. And x squared equals to, I mean, minus 4. So that gives you x equals to plus minus square root of 16. And this gives you x equals to plus minus square root of minus 4. Now, here we get x equals to plus minus 4. And in the domain of complex numbers, we get the answer as 2i, right? So that is how you could actually solve this particular question. So I hope the concept is absolutely clear. In the next video, I'll take up uh, to the power of 6 and I'll provide you with a link for that. And uh, let's do polynomial with degree 6 as an equation to solve. Bring with you a test question on polynomial equations. We'll solve this equation in the domain of complex numbers. The question is, find roots of the equation x to the power of 6 minus 26 x cubed minus 27 equals to 0, where x belongs to complex numbers. So let me rewrite this equation. It is x to the power of 6 minus 26 x cubed minus 27 equals to 0. Now since we are working in the domain of complex number, combined roots, real and complex, I mean all the roots should be, since the degree is 6, we are expecting 6 roots. Remember that part, right? And now let's begin. To solve this equation, we can make a substitution. Uh, substitution could be let x cube equals to p. In that case, we get a quadratic equation p square minus 26p minus 27 equals to 0, right? So I hope that is clear. If x cube is p, then x cube square, which is x to the power of 6, will be p square. So we substituted this value. Now you could factor uh, minus 26 is the sum, product is 27. So we could write p minus 27 times p plus 1 equals to 0. So that gives you two factors for the given equation and uh, <clears throat> from here we get our solution that p could be equal to 27 or p could be equal to minus 1. Now if p equals to 27, p is x cubed, that means x cubed equals to 27 or we get x cubed equals to minus 1. Now that gives you that x should be cube root of 27 
uh, which is 3. So we get answer x equals to 3 and we get one solution x equals to minus 1. So what we get here is two solutions, right? So we get two solutions. But well, we need six. How do we get the others? That is the key. How do we get the others? Now to get the others, what you do need to do is, we know these two factors, correct? We know these two factors. That is, we have a factor which is like x, <coughs> uh, I mean, x minus 3. And then we have a factor which is x minus 1. So if I replace x cube here, let me just show you. So we have this expression as x cube minus 27 times x cube plus 1 equal to 0, which led to these two solutions, right? So these are our part of solution. Is that clear? Now to get other solutions which are definitely complex numbers, we need to divide x cubed minus 27 by x minus 3 and x cubed plus 1 by x minus 1. You get an idea, right? So that's what we will divide by. So, so basically at this stage, what should we do? We will do the long division as some of my students are not very familiar with synthetic division so I will divide x cube now since there are two terms missing in between I'll write them with zero coefficients right zero x square plus zero x minus 27 I'm going to divide this by its factor which is x minus 3 right so I divide this by factor x minus 3 and get the rest you could do that or right so we could do that or we'll adopt the second method here you could uh, you know what is a cube minus p cube right so uh, let me write that on the top or or you know what is a cube minus b cube a cube minus b cube is a minus p times a square plus a b plus b square right if it is positive here that becomes positive this becomes negative we can use this get that quadratic expression once you get this quadratic expression in that case you can get the other roots i hope you get the idea perfect you could factor these guys okay now otherwise you could do this so let me for one i'll factor for other i'll divide so in this particular case, we'll take the two terms. We're going to multiply by x squared. So we get x cubed minus 3x squared. And that gives you 3x squared plus 0x. So I'll do three times, right? x. So we get 3x squared minus 9x. And that gives you 9x minus 27. And then we'll do plus 9 and we get 9x minus 27, which is 0 as expected. So we do get the second factor, which is actually a square plus ab plus b square. Do you see that? Yeah. So, and now we can find the roots of this equation, x square plus 3x plus 9. So we have this equation. The other factor is x square plus 3x plus 9 equated to 0. Now, We'll get complex roots from here, where x is equals to minus 3, right? Minus 3 plus minus b square, which is 9, minus 4ac, 4 times 9 is 36, divided by 2, correct? So these are the other two roots for us. Now, you can always um, find this out. Uh, I'm running short of space, so I'll just use this space here, okay? So we get minus 3 plus minus square root of, here we have a negative term, right? So when you take away 9, you get 27 here, over 2, right? Now that gives you uh, two roots, which are complex roots. Since this is negative, 
So you could factor out i. Square root of i is negative 1. Right? i squared is negative 1. And so we are left with 27, which is 9 times 3. So you could write 3 here. 3i three could have been better. Square root 3 over 2. So you get two more solutions here, as you can see. Uh, so that gives you two other solutions. Is it okay? So we have part solution here, part there. Anyway, I'm trying to s s reduce the space. Now, uh, you have understood how you could get the other root. What I'll do now here is that I'll factor x cubed plus 1. x cubed plus 1 equals to 0 uh, means that x plus 1, I'm applying the formula this time, uh, times square of x minus product, which is x square of 1 is 1, right, equals to 0. So from here, we have already got one of the roots, which is a real root. Now, the complex roots we are going to get from this portion, x square minus x, now we know x square minus x plus 1 equals to 0, implies that x is equals to minus b, that is 1, plus minus b square, which is 1, minus 4 is c, divided by 2. And that gives me x equals to 1 plus minus i, because this is minus, right? Square root 3 over 2. Do you see that? So we get two more roots here. Is that clear? So in this box here, let me write down the six solutions, correct? And therefore, our solutions are x equals to 3, these are the real solutions, minus 1, and also 1 plus minus i square root 3 over 2, and also minus 3 plus minus 3i square root 3 over 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 solutions, right? So we get four complex roots in this particular case, two real roots, and that is how you are going to solve this question. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. I tried to show you how we could actually go further from these cubic factors and find real as well as complex roots. So that's a very important part. You should take care of this. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.